What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Ask Abby, where I answer your writing questions and help you make your story matter. Today's episode of Ask Abby is a little bit different because I'm changing the way that I do these videos. So if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that usually once a month, I show up here on YouTube to answer a random assortment of questions that came into the show. And for a while, I've been doing these videos where I answer like three to four questions each time. So then I started thinking, how could I go deeper into each question and give you guys more content every month? And I figured it out. We're gonna do Ask Abby once a week. I'm gonna answer one question per video. So they're gonna be shorter, snappier, but still high value videos. And I'm really excited because this way I can answer more of your questions on a frequent basis and go a little bit deeper into each answer. So that's the deal. If you're wondering why is there only one question and answer in this video, that's why. And next week we're gonna do another one. So stay tuned for that. And as always, the way to submit questions to the show is to either hit the join button below this video or go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons, get inside the Inner Circle Facebook group and post your question there. Just make sure you hashtag it, ask Abby, so that I see it. Okay, so today's question comes from Christina. Hi everyone, I would like to ask Abby about the issue of suspense versus surprise. I love surprises and plot twists, and I enjoy the people's reaction in the comments at other works on events that they didn't see coming. I love to create aspects and then go like, oh, what if we didn't know that from the start? And I mostly found it better than if we know everything from the start. But you always are saying that suspense is better. Is it really a big problem to have several plot twists? How can I find out what case should be a suspense and what should be or can stay as a surprise? Is there a difference when it's a series and when it's one complete story. Okay, so this is a great question. Suspense versus surprise. These are two elements that you definitely need to explore as a good writer, but it is a balance creating the right amount of suspense and the right amount of surprise. I think that you should have both because as you said, it's enjoyable to experience surprises and plot twists, but you also want to have that nail-biting tension of suspense where you kind of know what's going to happen and you're just waiting for that moment when everything goes wrong. <laughs> Here's my rule of thumb. Give the reader what they need to care about the character. Don't conceal important information that would make us care about the characters just because you're saving it for a big plot twist moment later. So the kind of plot twists that I find a little bit frustrating to read about and watch is when you feel like you're being kept in the dark. So much so that you can't care about the characters, you can't empathize with them, and you don't really know what's going on. And you feel like the author kind of has this omniscient view of everything, and they're holding back all this information because they want to reveal it to you in a surprise moment later. But at the same time, it's kind of, making you not want to engage with the story. It's not, it's leaving out that addictive quality, right? It, it doesn't make you want to keep turning pages or keep clicking next episode because you don't necessarily feel emotionally invested in these characters. But there is a way to combine a bit of suspense and a bit of surprise and kind of mix those two things together and find the balance of what makes us care about the characters and how can we reveal enough of that so that I pull you in deeper and then I can surprise you once in a while with some cool plot twists. A great example of this balance handled super well is in the BBC series, Miss Scarlet and the Duke. Spoiler alert! When Eliza Scarlet's father dies, she takes over his private detective agency and in a desperate attempt to prove herself capable of following in her father's footsteps, she takes on the job of finding a missing person for a guy who's been looking for his niece, Clara. We learn that Clara ran away from her abusive husband, and so Eliza searches London until she finds her. But then when she finds Clara, plot twist. Message. My dear Clara. He is not my uncle. He's my husband. 
We're just as surprised as Eliza during this pivotal moment, as Clara is dragged away to an asylum against her will, and Eliza realizes the damage she has done. This scene offers a fantastic moment of surprise without taking away from the characters at all. If we had known all along that the evil husband was masquerading as the caring uncle, we might have felt some suspense, but it wouldn't necessarily make us care more about the protagonist. Instead, in a moment of surprise, we experience deep point of view. We feel what Eliza feels. Later on in this episode, there's another scene with a fantastic balance of suspense and surprise. When Eliza goes to confront Clara's evil husband, she exposes his crimes and corners him with evidence that he can't escape. We know this is a bad idea because this guy is clearly a villain and there's that rising suspense of, oh my God, he's going to kill her. But then at the last minute, Eliza reveals, the maid that owed me a favor. Not only did she give me your key, she kindly allowed me to make your coffee. It's surprising how little laudanum it takes to knock a man of your size unconscious. You are lying. No, no. <sighs> Not about that part, anyway. And surprise, she's safe. It's a satisfying moment because we didn't see it coming, and again, it makes us appreciate Eliza's character strength while still offering the audience an active viewing experience. So that's what I'm talking about, finding the balance between suspense and surprise. Your story definitely has room for both. Just try to define what are the ingredients that make us care about the characters and how can I show my reader that while still saving some surprise twists for later. Also, if you like Victorian mysteries with fantastic writing and hilarious banter, definitely check out Miss Scarlet and the Duke such a good show. But notice this, when you're watching TV or watching movies or reading books, notice how much suspense there is and how much surprise there is. And is there a balance of that that keeps you reading because you know enough, but the author does still surprise you once in a while with a plot twist that you didn't see coming. That's what I find as a consumer, as a reader, I notice that what engages me the most about story is when I care about the characters and I empathize with them and I wanna see what happens to them, but I'm also in on some of their decision-making process and I know what they know, so I'm deeply immersed in their character, but there's also maybe some surprising elements that I haven't guessed about their character yet, or some surprises that they're going to encounter and I will experience it kind of through their eyes. And last but not least, this is a great question to ask beta readers. When you start to share your work around and get feedback from honest beta readers, ask them questions like, when did you feel surprised? When did something happen that you weren't expecting? Or maybe when did the story start to lose your interest? I know nobody wants to think about their story losing the reader's interest, but it's important to know when those moments are so that you can maybe clue the reader in a little bit more, give them a little bit more of an understanding of what's happening to pull them deeper into the story. Okay, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that answers your question. If you would like me to answer your question here on Ask Abby, you know what to do. Hit the join button below this video and get inside the YouTube community and post your question there on the Ask Abby post in a comment or go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons and get inside the Patreon community and post your question in the Inner Circle Facebook group. Going forward, I will be making these videos each week and picking a new question each time. So maybe next time I will answer your question. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Shh. First, do research the big stuff, as I like to call it, for your first draft. And by that, I mean things that will have a direct impact on the on the plot and on the characters, and they will be difficult to fix later if you get them inaccurate in the first.